So my name is Matt Kapala. First, a little bit about myself. Um, and I'm talking about WordPress performance today, and specifically how to understand it, diagnose it, and, and fix, issue, fix problems with it. So about me, um, I'm originally from Arizona. Uh, I grew up there, went to college there um, uh, in Tucson at the University of Arizona. I studied computer engineering for four years. And after I graduated, I moved to Austin, Texas, and I got a job at AMD, where I worked as a computer engineer for a couple of years, and uh, on the uh, first 64-bit processor that AMD made, and uh, that little part right there in the corner was mine. Uh, after that, I left that job, and I uh, backpacked around the world for three and a half years, and visited, I don't know, a bunch of countries, but it was a nice long trip, so if you like to talk about travel, I do too. Look me up later. Um, then in 2011, I think, was about when I got involved with WordPress. I was, started doing some freelance and consulting work and uh, had a <clears throat> found a client that needed some work done, including building a WordPress uh, plugin and uh, back end, so I started doing some of that. Uh, it turned out that that project was successful, and fast forward a few years, I stepped back and did some other things. Um, but it was successful, but then he had issues with uh, his sites and performance and, and hacking and, and other things like that. And so uh, I ended up starting Site District, and we're a managed uh, WordPress hosting platform. And so we're <clears throat> and so I built that to solve the problem for uh, one client. And now we have hundreds of clients, and we're hosting thousands of sites. So. All right. So for today, first talk a little bit about why performance matters. Why are we even here? Why are we talking about it? Uh, how to measure it? Uh, a little bit about hosting and the effect on performance, diagnosing your uh, time, the server response time, uh, your actual page load speed in your browser, and a few words on caching, and because I'm a little bit crazy, and if we have enough time, a live demo. There'll be a couple, actually a couple of interactive things, and uh, a demo or two, if I can pull this off. First, why does performance matter? So, I'm not affiliated with the site, but I think, I think they really t tell it well. So how long does it take to lose a customer? So 2.7 seconds, that's how long um, people will apparently wait for a page to load. So if you have customers coming to your site, you want people to stay on your site, you want it to load quickly. A few more reasons. So conversions, page abandonment, which I already hinted at. Um, it wastes your time, especially if you're developing your site and the WordPress admin and that, that part of the, the site is slow. Perception of your visitors, your customers, if, they, if you see a slow site, um, so you're going to wonder, hey, do these guys really know what they're doing, um, especially if it's, you're selling technical services? You've got a slow site. Um, it doesn't seem like they have everything together. Your Google ranking. Google has said that uh, speed is a factor in its uh, ranking algorithms. And your client satisfaction, if you build a slow, or if you build a fast site for a customer and they're happy with it, then they're more likely to come back for repeat business or to recommend you to others. And then, I think that might be all for this slide, and then I want to make a bolder claim that beyond all these reasons, that speed equals happiness. People are impatient, no one wants to wait. So, something loads quickly, just waiting in line anywhere, speed, you're happy if it's fast. Just to drive that point home a little bit more. No one, no one has ever said they want their sites to be slower. All right, let's do a quick survey. Oh, this was for another WordCamp. But how many of you are just starting with WordPress or haven't ever used it? We have anyone here with that? This was for a beginner's day, I forgot I had different questions. How many have a site they're kind of just starting on? How many of you, let's see, have recently bought a hosting package? I have better questions on my other slide, sorry. Um, how many of you worked on a site or became slow? These are the ones I was looking for. Um, let me skip that, but one of the, one of the other questions was, how many of you have given up, to, how many have worked on trying to speed up a site before? Raise your hands. All right, so there we go. Look around, most people are raising their hands. How many of you have given up after trying to speed up a site? 
So I think the reason that a lot of people don't spend time trying to optimize their sites um, is for one reason, if you get started, it might just seem normal, the speed. And another reason, you might not understand how much faster it could be until you actually experience it. The variations in site speed can actually be quite huge. Um, sometimes sites can be 10 times slower on certain hosts or with certain um, plugins configurations compared to a more optimized version. And let's see, so I have a site here that one version which is not so optimized and another one that's optimized a bit more, and let's see if this works. And so here's the one that is uh, supposed to be a bit slower. And if I just click through on uh, some of the pages, if I can find my mouse, we can see just kind of how long it takes. For different pages to load. It's not terribly slow. But let's come over here and click on this version that's supposedly a little bit faster and more optimized. Same site, so noticeably faster. So that can be the difference between a site being fairly slow and taking a little bit while for people to go and navigate around. People are going to explore more, they're going to read more, they're going to stay on your site longer if it's fast. All right, that was that. So my hypothesis is, why don't more developers, designers, and site owners fix their slow sites? And partly because slow is comfortable and optimization can be risky and uncertain. And you just, or site owners, might, might not know how to make a site faster. Um, you don't know if or how much faster a site could be. And it's not that you don't want your site to be faster, it's that it's not a priority. So I want to speak a little bit more about what priority I want to define priority as value divided by effort. So we've already talked about the value of having a fast site. Um, now, let's talk about the effort. If you can get the effort to go down, then your priority will go up. So my goal today is to show you how to minimize that effort. So first though, how do we measure website performance? Before we get into the specifics, let's just talk about um, how a page loads in your browser in terms of speed and performance. So when you, um, when you open up a browser, put in an address or a domain in there and try to look, um, pull it up, uh, first thing that happens is your browser is going to go off and make a DNS query. It's going to find out where that page lives. Then it's going to, establish, assuming your site is running HTTPS, and these days all of your sites should be, um, it will establish a secure connection, and then it will send a request to the server and uh, wait for the server to send back the HTML from, for the work of the site. And once that initial content comes back from the site, then your browser will do several things in parallel. It'll start parsing the, the uh, HTML sent back. It'll start downloading images and other assets, other things that it needs to display on the site. And it will do the actual um, work of actually rendering and painting what's on the page. So this first part here is, and sometimes even just the server response time is often called the time to first byte. And that, that's the red part there. And that right there is the bottleneck is actually WordPress itself generating um, the page. So how fast should time to first byte be? So obviously the faster the better. And um, when we're testing a site, it's good to try and optimize your site um, without any caching. Uh, caching has its fallbacks or uh, disadvantages. I'll talk about some of those later. But when you start testing performance, turn off caching and turn off other stuff like that so you can get an idea of the raw performance of your site, the get a baseline. So I consider for time to first bite to be very fast, to be 50 to 150 milliseconds. Actually, um, seen that down to almost 25 milliseconds on some really fast sites. Fast, 150 to 300, good, 3 to 500, average 500 to 700, getting slower, and very slow. And some of the slowest sites that I've seen have taken 15 to 30 seconds for the server to return back the page. So you'll, you're sitting there staring at a blank white screen for 30 seconds before you see anything show up. So for WordPress, I think this is a pretty decent ballpark for um, 
response time without any caching. Under 500 seconds, you're usually doing pretty good. Again, faster the better, but this is a good uh, area to shoot for. All right, so um, how do we test page speed? There's a few ways. This is an extension, it's a screenshot of an extension that I really like. Um, if you use Google Chrome, you can get the page performance extension. Well, that was a good place. And every page you load in your browser, then you can click on the little icon there up in the corner, and it'll tell you what the time to first byte was for that page. You slide from Seattle. <laughs> um, and so you don't need to do anything special, you just need the extension installed, and then you can see for any page, it doesn't have to be WordPress or anything, how long that it took for the servers to send that um, first byte back. Another tool um, is you can use Chrome itself. If you open Chrome up and you go follow the menus down, you can open up the uh, developer tools. And then you can click on this network tab that shows up in here, and you will need to reload your page after this. But then after you reload the page, you can hover over the little bar there, and it'll show a little pop-up, and it'll also show you what the time to first byte was for um, your page. And one of my favorite tools is web page tests. And so if you go to webpagetest.org, this is what it looks like. Come in here and you can put in your site and test it out. And it'll measure both your resp server response time as well as the full uh, page load time. Now there are some settings I recommend changing when you come in here. Pick a test location that's close to you. To get a really good baseline measure of your site performance, test, um, test it as close to the actual location of your server as possible. So adjust that. Uh, then change the connection to native so you're not noticing any effects of the network slowness like if you were to load it over um, your phone or something like that. This is going to test it as fast as it can go. Change the number of test runs to one and then uh, click on the first and repeat view and the capture video. And these aren't default and that's why I highlighted them. Um, I'll show you why in a sec. After you run the test you'll get a page at the back that looks like this bunch of useful numbers on it. And to start, uh, the bottleneck is often that time to first bite. It's the first bite time here, and it shows that. Um, and then the second thing that I highlight on here is speed index, and that is a number that represents how long it take for, took for the page to be visually complete, kind of on average. So it's a calculated number. Page load times um, can be misleading. And so this tool, if you, especially if you click, I think it's the capture video, it'll let you get an idea of how long someone actually viewing your web page, how long it took until they're seeing what you expect them to. Um, so speed and effects, again, the visible parts. It's expressed in those seconds, blah, blah, blah. And this is what we care about. Why? Again, because this is what people actually see. So with a lot of these testing tools, that's not always what you're looking at. You can also click into a waterfall view from web page test and you'll get, you'll get to see a similar, it's the same kind of waterfall view that I showed earlier, but for your actual site and showing the actual numbers for the site that you tested. For, if you click that video, capture video view, you also get a film strip view. You can click into this and you can see how long um, it took for the page to render over time, which is really cool. So in this case, we can see for this page, for the first 0.7 seconds, screen was blank, and then it started to pop in, and just a second after, the image, um, and then finally it rendered some all the text uh, a little bit later. But you can actually see what, what people are seeing over time. Let's see. Oops, I was going to ask. Did you see that? How many people have used GT metrics before? All right, so there's that slide. <laughs> friends don't let friends use GT metrics. Why is that? So. Um, Let's see. And this is pretty much it. Um, I think that and some other tools, uh, you don't get to see all that important information as easily. You either need to sign up or click through several screens, or it, it shows you a lot of things that can be misleading that don't necessarily need to be optimized. So if you're measuring your website performance, make sure you're focusing on what people are actually experiencing or what maybe search engines are seeing as they're requesting your site. Some random grade on some Y slow or something like that doesn't really matter so much. So, server response time. Um, what are the factors that affect that? So, 
One is your hosting provider, and second is your website implementation. Those are the main two things. And what does a website implementation mean? Well, that's pretty much your theme and your plugins. All right, so here's an interactive part. If you've got laptops out or can get online, this works really good if more people do it, but we can give it a test. Come to this page right here, bit.ly slash live speed, and you'll see a page that looks like this. And I'm gonna reload it, just to make sure I've got the connection right. Um, you go ahead and put in any WordPress sites that you have in here. You can put in any that you know, you've worked on, previously, past, whatever. And this, our tool here, let me zoom it out a bit, will go off and test the server response time, just the time to first light for your sites and display it up here on the screen. And so it should update all of your screens kind of in real time. So feel free to put as many in there. And we'll get an idea of where at all the sites that you're testing, we're gonna get an idea of what the actual time to first light is for the sites. And this tries to bypass any page caching that you might have active as well, too. All right, so we've got a bunch coming in. So that's great. And what we see here, behind the TV for me, is most of the sites are not under that 500 milliseconds. So 500 milliseconds or left, left less is this column right here. We see the majority of sites are over 500 milliseconds with the response time, much slower. All right, we'll leave that up. You can test it some more. You can even hit it later, but I'm going to keep on going. Thanks for playing. <laughs> All right, so WordPress hosting. Your hosting provider. Yes, it does matter a lot. And is better hosting the solution for speeding up your website? Much of the time, actually, it is yes. Um, other times, a slow and bloated site can be slow and bloated. It might be faster on, on one hosting platform, but it could be still be slow or not as fast. And how do you know if your hosting is a problem? So certain hosting providers are known to provide, be well optimized, consistently fast, have better performance. Um, this, Let's see, other hosting providers, it depends on the plan, box, time of day. Certain hosts are also generally known to be slower as well. Um, some places can be five to 10 times slower as a more optimized host. So I've seen 20 times, 30 times even. So what factors into the server and the hosting? Um, so I just added this slide today after some feedback. And I pretty much sum it up to the hardware and the networking. So what kind of hardware have they got it on? Um, that's CPU, RAM, memory, um, the network pipe, all the other fun stuff. Server configuration, so that's how it's the software on the server is actually configured. What web server is it running on? What settings are you using for PHP and other things like that? And then finally, and this is definitely an important one, is the load on the server. So not necessarily exactly how many sites but relative to the size of the server, are there too many sites or too much traffic for that server that can slow? If there's too much, it's going to slow everything down. Um, let me talk a little bit more about web servers. So generally, I find that Nginx, which is a type of web server running PHP, FPM in the back end, um, is generally faster. Um, but in, it's a smaller number of hosts that are running this. Um, they tend to be hosts with a more custom WordPress platform. Uh, and Whereas opposed to the much larger number is hosts that are running cPanel tend to be a little bit more generic. There are a lot of hosts that use this. Um, but I found that cPanel coupled with Apache is, is uh, generally slower, about twice as slow as the other configuration. So your takeaway is if your host is providing cPanel, your site's probably not as fast as it could be. Let's see, here's another checklist. So what else um, might be involved? And what can't plug plugins help you with? What needs to be done at the server level? And so, here's a few things. <laughs> Those were supposed to appear one at a time really fast, but they didn't. And you look at that huge list, and that's probably what you're thinking. That's a lot of stuff. So, so you, should you try and figure all this out? How many people here are self-hosting? All right, 
right, so then you might want to look at this slide, go through this later, but for everyone that's not, then how do you figure out, like, check your host and see if it's optimized, if it's fast or not? So better option is, um, how do you know if it's properly optimized? And it's not easy to verify reliably, at least not while your site is hosted on your current host. So try another hosting provider. And how? Put an exact copy of your site on another more optimized WordPress host. And in a lot of cases, you can do this. Um, certain hosting providers will let you sign up for free, or you've got a, you can do a money back kind of 30 day thing, it depends. Um, some ways of copying your site to a new host uh, include, you can, there are many backup and restore plugins, I'll show a few of those. Uh, a better option is if there's a migration plugin that's uh, more specific to that hosting provider, there's a bunch of those, I'll show some of those too. Uh, and if you've got something even that's where you don't even need to go install a plugin manually, um, then that's even faster. So here's some backup and restore plugins. Um, don't necessarily recommend any of them. Uh, these are some of the more popular ones, but these can be used to make a copy of your site to move it somewhere else. Uh, some of the hosting providers have their own plugins, Cloudways and SiteGround, and then a few um, other ones uh, have another solution that actually uses an external service called Blog Vault to, to help migrate a site. All right, and we have an importing plugin too, but I'm not going to show it off later. If I get time, I'll show it off in the demo, but you can also um, view a page about how we import sites. All right, so once you've got your site copied over another server, how are you going to test it? Well, let's go back to web page test, which I showed earlier. And if you import your site to Site District, if you choose to use that to test it, you can copy your site onto our platform and test it out without paying for anything. Um, and we have some tools in there um, for testing the speed as well. I want to say a word about shared and dedicated VPS hosting versus like managed hosting. And, um, I think there's an idea out there that a VPS is for performance. Um, but VPS or dedicated server is really about flexibility and not performance. And a well-managed uh, and in many, many cases shared platform can easily outperform a VPS or dedicated server. Um, what the extra flexibility often means is you just buy yourself a system administrative job. So make sure, for most people, not everyone, but for most people, performance is what you want. So Consider that um, when you're trying to decide what you're going to do in terms of hosting. All right, uh, let's just talk about the total cost of hosting. Some people don't want to pay more for hosting in some cases um, because they can think it's expensive. So just a few words on that. And how many people in here know Bridget Willard? A few maybe? So um, she's uh, West Coast and she speaks um, at several word camps too. And she decided to write a blog post about um, manage hosting. So, and she put out a tweet on Twitter and she got a bunch of responses back. And this is what she wrote $25. That's what I pay for my managed WordPress hosting uh, with my vendor and client, Pressable. Yet most people think $25 is expensive, is it? And so, your website is, <clears throat> is for your business, is $25 a month worth, worth it? So, and these are some of the responses she got back. What do you spend $25 a month on? Donuts. Starbucks. And here was, here's a good one I think that just kind of sums it up well. Her final thoughts, and your time is also worth money, so it doesn't matter what you choose, but in her case, she recommends managed hosting. Um, so if you think speed is important, Check out some of the options that might seem more expensive at first, but could save you some time at least in, uh, in the long run. So is it worth it? If it's an e-commerce site with a lot of volume, then I'd say definitely yes. Is it important to the client? Um, and technical support with some of the higher end WordPress hosts is generally better too. And, I, and finally, again, what is your time worth? Uh, I put a ranking together based on experience with lots of websites of different hosts and where they fall on a relatively speed-wise. I actually noticed after I put this together that it matches up with my slide earlier about that. Um, most of the hosts on the right side here are cPanel hosts, and the 
ones on the left are, are have a custom platform using Nginx and their own uh, control panel usually. Um, and I showed this slide at one camp and then this is someone else said, well wait, I, I'm on this house, can you show them the slow column? I think my website's pretty fast. So, some replies to that or things to consider. Ignorance is bliss. Um, your site might load in two seconds, but you just haven't seen it load in one second, possibly somewhere else. And page caching, are, is your site being loaded from the cache? Like, test your site without page caching and see if it's still fast. Uh, and yes, maybe it's good enough. If your site is fast enough, you're happy with it, your clients are happy, um, then great. And mobile, also consider how will your site load on a mobile device. So you can also use web page test. Um, I didn't show how, but you can use that to test your site on mobile browsers. With a, and also you can change the network connection to be a bit slower. You can see how your site would load on a slower um, device or a mobile device. All right, you might be thinking, why well, we just spent 20 slides talking about hosting. And yes, it is that important. Um, so this is from a Facebook group uh, called WordPress Speedup. And someone was on there and I, I decided to help him out a bit. He said he tried all the other suggestions from people on the group and the results were not worth it. He spent five days trying to speed up his um, site and in the end his efforts did not work. And hosting, let's see. For hosting, try before you buy, I recommend. Don't pay for one to three years of hosting at a discounted price. Um, start on a monthly hosting plan. Um, <laughs> or better yet, start with a fast host that provides free development <laughs> platform, Pantheon Flywheel, we do too. Try it out first and see how the speed compares. Uh, let's see, so let's talk now about that. Uh, time to first byte. Let's say you've moved your site to a uh, host, uh, host that's known to be faster, but your site's still a bit slow. Then how do you figure that out? For most people, this is a black box. No one can look, is able to look inside easily and really figure out what's going on. So today, let's go ahead and take a look inside. First, when we diagnose site performance, we're going to uh, do it in several steps. First, we want to generate or wait for some traffic if you're uh, testing in production and you've got actual traffic to your site. Then you want to you're going to profile it and you're going to review the results. In this case, we're going to I'll show you how we use that do that with New Relic. And we'll, you'll make a change and then you'll repeat. So the difference between doing this um, and what a lot of people end up doing is we're not going to be guessing. We're going to this uh, we're going to be using a profiling tool and looking at um, results in New Relic, and it's going to tell us quite accurately in many cases what exactly is slowing down your site. So what is New Relic? New Relic is an application performance monitoring tool. Um, there's a free version available, but uh, the pro version is most useful. Um, there's a free trial for that too. But you do need root level access to install it, but it's also provided by uh, several WordPress hosting providers. And I personally have diagnosed hundreds of performance issues across tons of sites in uh, very little time. Sometimes I can tell what's slowing down a site in less than five minutes, um, thanks to New Relic. So when you first get into New Relic and pop open uh, the page in their APM tool, you'll see this overview page here. And it's, it's cool, it's interesting, it shows you how much time uh, on average over however many requests that you sent to your server during that time. How much time it's spent in PHP, which would be the blue here, and how much time it's spent in MySQL on the, with the database. And then an average of the total response time. And that's pretty neat, it's cool, but it, uh, sometimes it helps you out, or at least figure out if you have, like in some cases this database time could be a majority of it. But it doesn't tell you a lot. So a few years ago New Relic came out with uh, some special WordPress profiling tools integrated in. So if you were to click down on that plugins and themes over here, then you'll see something that looks like this. And so this right here is telling me by the themes and or by the plugins, and it will also include the theme in here. 
what's taking up the most time for the requests um, while I was testing it. And so for this particular site that we tested out, um, there was this AV testing plugin that was on the site and actually wasn't really needed. And so once we saw this, you could, um, this person was able to turn off that plugin on the site and their site got twice as fast instantly. Here's some other examples. These are old, things might have changed. There happened to be one site, um, like Jetpack has a lot of things in it, but certain, it depends on what you have turned on, but maybe these were some sites here that were quite slow from uh, Jetpack for some reason. Like I said, these are a few years old. Um, I've seen Yoast SEO slow down the WordPress admin side, not so much the front end, but sometimes all the admin pages. Um, and the point of these isn't necessarily that any of these plugins are bad or if you see them show up, but uh, rather it's a starting point. Oops, I'm jumping ahead. Thanks. Um, rather it's a starting point, um, and I'll talk about that more in a minute too, but um, you need to figure out what's going on there. There could be a new version, something could have been patched, it might be a configuration um, option that you just need to change. So before I started using New Relic, that's kind of what I felt like. And then after New Relic, All right, should you use plugins to optimize your WordPress site? Uh, they can't optimize your raw site performance. Plugins, can't, plugins are extra code. They cannot make your raw performance faster. You need faster hardware or to optimize the actual configuration on the server for that. Um, they mostly cover up performance issues. Um, some cases they uh, actually cause them too. Uh, and I generally don't recommend them. Um, and you don't need them on more optimized and faster hosting. Um, and they can oftentimes, like I said, make the server response time a bit fast if it's on a fast service. Let's see, possible exceptions. You might want to use page caching. Um, and if I have time, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So, true story about server optimization. I don't actually use New Relic as much as I used to anymore. It's a great tool, but uh, until March 2018, last year sometime, our sites were faster than a lot of places, but still not quite as fast as some places such as Kinsta and Pantheon. And I know we needed to do some optimization, so we did some work too, and I expected a 20-30% gain, but afterwards our sites were so so much faster. Um, I think we got twice as fast, and we've sped them up even more since then. That It didn't become worth the time to try and optimize anymore to diagnose plugins and, and themes. So. In many cases, you can, just by getting your site running on faster hardware with a better configuration, your site will be so much faster with a lot less work, you won't need to start going through your plugins. All right, page load, a little bit about page load now. So once I talk a lot, spend most of the time talking about the server response time. For most people's sites, that is usually the bottleneck and where things are the slowest. And as we saw with that live testing earlier, for pretty much everyone's sites we put in here, they were all slower than that 500 milliseconds like cutoff that I gave. Um, make sure your host uh, or your server is running HTTP2. Um, so I said earlier, make sure you're on HTTPS. HTTP2 is a newer version of the HTTP protocol, but it just works with the HTTPS and can be quite a bit faster. Um, let's see, those are some of the benefits. I won't get into the details of, of those. Um, but some hosts are, most hosts are running HTTP2, some aren't yet, so check on that. Image compression for your page load. Uh, go back to web page test, scroll down at the bottom, look for this pie chart on the bottom and see if your image there is taking up a majority of the, um, check your grade at the top where it says compress images and then scroll down and see how much of your images, how much of your total page bytes is the image. If it's got a bad grade or this is really high, then Look at optimizing your images. Um, that will help your page load faster in the browser. Five minutes, all right. Um, there's some plugins that will also help you compress and optimize images while they're uploaded. Um, Insanity is one. Let's see, and I'll resize some. You can also do a batch convert uh, or a bulk resize. Those are some of the settings. You can check these slides out later if you want. Finally, caching. So is page caching the solution to a slow site? And I pretty much said no earlier, but why? Um, caching is to, meant to scale websites with lots of traffic. That's what caching is actually for. Um, um, 
your site should be fast without caching um, as much as possible. And caching on a slow site, it only hides perfor poor performance and often only a part of the time. So use it as a last resort after you've done everything else. Places where caching falls down, it's not going to help you on your WordPress admin if that part's slow. Front end pages, if your users are logged in, large sites with a lot of pages, sites and pages with uh, content customized to the user. Caches uh, expire, get cleared or flushed, and yeah, the next request could be slow. So you want your site to be fast without caching. Um, I'm going to skip through this because we're really low on time. But this is one of the best uh, quotes that I found on caching. So skip over this too. Summary, um, measure performance, pick good host, check our measure um, time to first byte if it's still slow. Um, profile with new relic optimizer images. Use a plugin for page caching if your host doesn't provide it. Um, I didn't talk about a CDN too, but like Cloudflare and stuff like that is also kind of a last resort. Um, it's not gonna speed up your site at the server level. It's really for other things. Um, and let's see, I don't know if I have time for a demo or if the questions are better. Um, kind of running out of time. Let me see what I can do in a few minutes. So, real quick here. That's just me talking to myself. Um, this is our site. Now I'm going to show if you were to sign up here quickly um, and you want to import a site onto our platform, what it would look like and how you would test it. see if this works. <laughs> so once I've come in here, I've set up a test site on um, GoDaddy actually, and I can click add existing site in here and I can put in my URL. And click this check site button and it's going to go off and look up a few things about my site. Figure out doesn't work, we'll just go to questions. Okay, that looks better. This will look up some information about my site, including the hosting provider and the domain registrar and some other useful stuff. This is just telling Site District about your site. Like, So we can click Add Site here and we'll add it to our dashboard so we know a bit about it. This takes a second here. Next, we'll let you install our plugin. All you need is your WordPress admin credentials and you can just fill them in on the screen. If I type my password right, that's actually the hardest step in the whole process. <laughs> this will go off, it'll log into WordPress, hopefully. Um, and it will install our plugin onto the server. And all our plugin really is is basically a kind of a backup restore type of plugin. It'll let you then, it'll let us directly pull your site content, your database and everything over um, to our server. And then you can test a copy on our server versus the other one. And this isn't, it's hard to kind of show this without it coming across as too much of a sales pitch, but really this will let you answer um, that question, is my hosting part of the issue, how much faster can my site be? So that's really what I want to get across here is there are some easy ways to do it. Other ways, I, like I said, I'm not going to show what I mentioned earlier. Just make a copy of your site somewhere else and test it out and see what the difference is uh, between the two. So, and I'm almost out of time. Hopefully, luckily, this is, a brand, this is pretty much a brand new WordPress site. I set it up very basic, just running the 2019 theme. I think I installed a few plugins on it. I just set up this morning, actually. Um, and we'll copy that over, not too much stuff, and then we'll be able to look at the copy um, on GoDaddy versus the copy that we pulled over. And it's just on their very basic uh, shared hosting plan. Almost done. Actually, while that's running, I'll show one more thing. Once I've added a site to site district, I can 
also do some other tests. I can click over here on the left side. Once I told my um, site district about my website, the domain, you can click over here and you can run a web page test on it. And it'll pick some the default options and the other stuff that I recommended. And just click run test. It'll open up. This one's going to run from California. I should have changed the location, but and that'll pop up later. All right, so the site's imported, and then the next thing you could do is you click this Review Now button here, and we're gonna load up the copy on Site District and the copy on GoDaddy, um, and just show them right next to each other so you can visually check if anything's broken from the, the import copy process. And I recommend hitting the Test Again button a few times, and you can get a visual idea of how a full page load looks between the copy on your old host and, in this case, on Site District. And then, we jump back over here. We can also test the server response time um, on both sites. And this will go and test just that time to first byte on up to 30 pages on each site. So, this is gonna run here, and woo, it's already done. So we just hit 30 pages on the copy on site district, and the other one's still running. It's not, not taking too long. But it's definitely, you can see slower. And at the end, we'll get a, I didn't do the math for you, but you can see 10 times faster on the server response time, the exact same site um, copied over. No, nothing special, no extra caching or magic, really. It's, you know, it's just the same site. And the web page test results at CF, whoops. Go away, menu bar. And let's see. That was the test site on um, web page test, and I can also run a site, but I'm out of time, so I'm just going to quit here. But web page test here, you've got your results, and this here's that film strip view that I definitely recommend checking out. This will show you how long it took your site to, to render over time. This one's not a good example because it all appears at once and it's only text, but check out web page test for sure for testing your sites, and that's about it. Uh, if you do have questions, I'll hang out outside, catch me afterwards. Thanks for staying until the very end. And, uh, Hope you learned a lot. So.